my journey as a black woman opening the first women's boxing gym in New York City. I didn't think about me being black. I thought about what I needed and that it wasn't there when I needed it and how much I went through. Half the people said, she can't do it. She'll never be able to do it. The other half said she's the only person that could do it. I had a very, very successful and interesting 19 years in publishing. You know, working in the office. I was a creative director. Really awesome career. But I wasn't in a healthy place at all. It was a turning point when I went to the doctor. He said to me, if you keep living the way you're doing, you're going to be dead before you're 40. I told myself it was going to be a process. I didn't have that unrealistic expectation. My most important training, it had to start from the inside. For me, getting into boxing, as heavy as I was, I felt like I could dance like them. I could move like them when I walked into the gym. Of course, I was terrified because I walk into this space and there are no women there. It took me two weeks to watch and study and to work up the courage to approach my trainer. I said, today is going to be the day. You're going to teach me everything you've been teaching these guys. And he looked at me. And he said, what? I said, you heard me. He's like, well, put your gloves on and come on, let's go. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. All right, so you wrapped up? I was there for about maybe six years. What I witnessed, I witnessed women being assaulted by the trainers. I noticed that the trainers, they wouldn't teach them boxing. I felt a responsibility to do more and to change that. It was so obvious how we were treated so differently and I didn't like it. I just said to myself, you can do this better. You can do this in a way that you can keep people safe. When women walk into the gym, they are looking for real training. They're looking for that safe space where they can just go and just be served and not have to worry and not have to be on guard and high alert. One, two, it's just been awesome watching everybody just grow into themselves. And I applaud you all. I thank you for always coming back and, and trusting me and listening sometimes, you know, you know. <laughs> but, uh, Women's World of Boxing was built for women. Keep your chin down, turn your punches over. When people ask me, well, how has it changed? It's changed because now it's like, it's a woman's house. And a woman has all kinds of guests in her house. So it's like the Parkinson's group, the work that we do with the Parkinson's patients, they're looking for something to fight for, as opposed to being in pain. They realize they still have fight in them. The kids, you know, the partnership that we have with the 23rd Precinct, the NYPD, they could be out fighting in the street. They could be doing all kinds of things. They want to be at the gym all the time because, again, they're wanting more for themselves. There's no such thing as messing up. There isn't. We practice, OK? <laughs> the boys, the girls, the seniors, everybody together, each group that I train with, they just provide joy on so many different levels. That's what you came here to do. <laughs> For my own mental health, I know that I have to maintain my training. I love training because I love learning. I've been boxing a long time, but I'm still learning. When I think about where I am today, I think often of the importance of having a healthy relationship with myself. In maintaining my wellness, it gives me the stamina and the balance that I need to show up. Hey, I'm telling you, next time, three sets of 20. Yeah. <laughs> next, next, next time, three sets of one. <laughs> That's it. I am proud to be 
that black gay woman that opened the first women's boxing gym in New York City because they said it couldn't be done. And it took a black, okay? It took a black gay, okay, woman to open that gym up in East Harlem and to make it happen and to make it home for everybody.